Hello, I'm Joseph Charles Nemeth IV, also known by my stage name, Corin Nemeth. I'm a Texas Freemason. You may know me from some of the many roles I've played so far in my career in movies and television programs, but my role as a Freemason is one that I hold very dear. I'm in the Masonic Library at the Scottish Rite Cathedral here in San Antonio. Now, I really like researching our Masonic history and symbolism. Take the Masonic apron, for example. You see all different sizes, drawings, symbols, colors. And so much is written on the subject. Everything from the first clothing worn by man to astrological symbolism of the four elements of nature and its relationship to the triune self of man. Now, Texas Freemasonry is more down to earth. In fact, Article 273 of the Laws of the Grand Lodge of Texas states the apron shall be 16 inches square, with a drop in the bib of 6 inches to the triangular point. And your first thought might be, it's very basic, nothing very exciting. But let's take a closer look. There's a geometry here, brought to life with computer-generated illustrations by Brother Pete Martinez, past master of Tyler Lodge, number 1233, and a member of the Texas Lodge of Research. You know, the guys who wear replicas of the original Grand Lodge of the Republic of Texas anyway. So Brother Martinez, seeing the vision of Article 273, used only ruler and compasses to illustrate the geometry of the guidelines we Texas Freemasons use for our Masonic aprons. Brother Martinez first laid out a 20 inch by 20 inch grid. A 20 inch diameter circle is drawn inside the grid. Next, two straight lines are drawn from the bottom center to each of the upper corners of the square, which as you see, creates a letter V. Now, where the two lines cross the circle, two more lines are drawn down to the bottom, and a horizontal line connects them at the top. This positions the vertical lines two inches in from each side of the larger square, and the horizontal line four inches down from the top. Another horizontal line drawn at the bottom results in a 16-inch square. Drawing lines from the top corners of the 16-inch square to the center of the 20-inch diameter circle results in a 6-inch drop from the top. And this completes the 16-inch square apron with a 6-inch drop to the triangular point. You know, for years, Texas Masons have wondered about the designs upon the Grand Lodge officer's apron and how they were derived. The most beautiful design to be found in the regalia of the Grand Lodge of Texas is, of course, the apron design for the Grand Master. It is at once the most colorful, the most complicated, and the most fascinating of the many designs. It's formed by an amazing combination of geometric figures and Masonic symbols. But first thing first. The current Grand Lodge regalia was fashioned and adopted in 1931. It was this man, past Grand Master Jewel P. Lightfoot, who led the committee coming up with the designs. Lightfoot was Grand Master of Texas Masons in 1915. In fact, at the time of his death in 1950, this former Texas Attorney General had held every high Masonic honor within the Blue Lodge, the Knights Templar, Royal Arch Masonry, and the Shrine. In present day, Jewel P. Lightfoot is best remembered for what is hailed as the most notable contribution to Masonic literature in recent times. This book, Lightfoot's Manual of the Lodge, represents some 30 years of research and acclaimed by the then Grand Lodge leadership as a work of art, a masterpiece. Everything to be desired in a monitor both editorially and mechanically. Lightfoot himself said the main objective was to restore, as far as possible, the language employed by the early lodges of England and colonial America so that uniformity in the work may be preserved in harmony with the rites and ceremonies of ancient craft masonry. To restore to the emblems and symbols those features which are essential to reflect in a concealed way the original and true significance. In this booklet is even greater detail surrounding the development of Grand Lodge regalia plus events surrounding the presentation of the regalia to Grand Lodge. The emblems found on the bib 
and in the lower corners of the Grand Lodge aprons are both colorful and meaningful. One can now easily see in this arrangement of the celestial bodies the star motif in a progression from the five-pointed star through the various phases of the moon to the rising and setting sun. Lightfoot chose as the appropriate symbol of the Grand Tyler's apron the nine arches through which the ancient neophyte had to pass to gain entrance to the temple, a symbol which figures prominently in one of the cryptic degrees. Continuing the allegory, the neophyte is met by the grand pursuivant and conducted to places and stations of the grand officers. That of the grand pursuivant is an encircled triple tau cross, the signet of our three ancient grand masters, a symbol highly esteemed by royal archmasons. As the triple tower is comprised of six angles of 90 degrees or the fourth part of a circle, it contains the same number of degrees as the signet of Enoch and signifies by right angles what is shown by the others in triangles, the sublime symbolic character of the three rulers of the lodge when at Masonic work. The design of the Grand Junior Steward's Apron is an encircled inverted isosceles right angle triangle which fills half the circle a symbol of matter and mind. In the star motif progression, we may designate this symbol the three-pointed star. The design on the apron of the Grand Senior Steward is an encircled square, the signet of Aaron, the anointed high priest of Jehovah and master of symbolic masonry. He was commanded to wear this symbol at all times when he entered the Holy of Holies on pain of destruction. The breastplate which bore this symbol was called by our ancient brethren the breastplate of righteousness. We may refer to this symbol as the four-pointed star. The apron of the Grand Junior Deacon exhibits the five-pointed star, the signet of Solomon, the Penta Alpha, the symbol of Masonic light. Otherwise represented by the five-pointed star of masonry, it being five-fold, an endless triangle with lines continually reproduced it is therefore an emblem of eternity. The apron of the Grand Senior Deacon, the first of two digressions from the star motif, introduces one of the most familiar and important Masonic symbols, the encircled 47th problem of Euclid, the signet of Pythagoras, considered by many as the wisest of philosophers. It is the most celebrated problem in geometry on which ancient craft masonry is founded. It signifies the divine order of creation and was hailed by our ancient brethren as the symbol of divine providence, which is perpetual creation. The apron of the Grand Marshal is embroidered with an encircled six-pointed star, a signet of King David, a triangle upon a triangle, composed of two equal and equilateral triangles whose bases are opposite yet parallel. This six-pointed star was hailed by ancient brethren of all nations as the symbol of divine humanity, the image of God in man. On the Grand Orator's apron is the seven-pointed star, signet of Moses, the man of God who went up to the east in Sinai and received two tablets of the law. This symbol is the sevenfold endless triangle it being a geometric figure composed of lines which return upon themselves to infinity by the number of perfection, seven, was hailed by our ancient brethren as the symbol of divine perfection in all things. The emblem gracing the apron of the Grand Chaplain, the second digression from the star motif, depicts the two tablets of the law, one signifying the duties we owe to God and one, the duty we owe to man. Both are joined in one block signifying that one cannot be broken without also breaking the other. Note that the squares of the entered apprentice and fellow craft lodges, as here presented, have the horizontal arm 
twice the length of the perpendicular, which conforms to the squares made by the Tau cross. On the apron of the Grand Secretary is embroidered an encircled eight-pointed star, the signet of Melchizedek, king of Shalom. The Octa Alpha, or eightfold endless triangle, is composed of lines continually reproduced to infinity by right angles, horizontals, perpendiculars, and diagonals. It was hailed by ancient brethren among all nations as the symbol of divine omnipotence, universal, infinite, and eternal. The circled nine-pointed star adorns the apron of the Grand Treasurer, the signet of Enoch, seventh from Adam. This geometric figure is composed of three equal and equilateral triangles regularly disposed about the center. It is the symbol of illumination, hailed by ancient brethren as the sign of the Shekinah, the divine and omnific light. The designs of the next three grand officers display the symbolic lodge room floor and its method of delineation. The designs on the Grand Junior Warden's apron show the manner of delineating the floor of the symbolic lodge room from the triangular upturned apron bib, its main body, the keystone, and so on. The Grand Senior Warden's apron displays the symbolic lodge room floor, including the tessellated border imposed upon a circle. Its central figure, the Passion, or Calvary Cross, ringed. The Deputy Grand Master's apron also depicts the symbolic lodge room floor with its tessellated border. Imposed upon a circle, its central figure is the handled cross, or onk. The overall design of the Grand Master's apron is formed by repetition of a basic design which is used ten times. Several steps are needed to explain it. We begin with a right triangle representing the upturned bib of the symbolic apron. We follow the square on its base points A, D, E, and B, representing the main body of the symbolic apron. Two squares on the upper sides of the bib complete the 47th problem of Euclid. The lines from I to D and E to F outline the keystone. These two extended downward meet at Z, forming the angle of 36 degrees, the tenth part of a circle. Two adjoining squares complete the outline of the symbolic lodge room floor whose length is twice its width. Lines N through O and Y through Z outline the Tau cross. The crooks and Sada or handled cross is added by drawing two circles concentric at X. Ten of these symbols complete a circle and the design on the Grand Master's apron. This combination of geometric figures and familiar Masonic symbols on the Grand Master's apron make up the most colorful, the most fascinating, and the most revealing of all the designs on the aprons of Grand Lodge officers. Aprons of the Grand Organist and the Grand Photographer were added in 1991. The lyre was chosen as the emblem of the Grand Organist, as it is an ancient symbol for music. The hourglass with wings represents time and its relentless movement, just as music moves through time to bring the proper mood to the occasion. Photography is a modern art and does not have ancient roots. However, there are cave paintings and hieroglyphics that served the same purpose in ancient times. These artists progressed to using a palette and a brush to mix colors and record images for posterity. The trowel is used to spread or mix these colors, representing brotherly love and interest of his brethren as his efforts extend to record their activities. The District Deputy Grand Master's apron was designed in 1953. The symbolic design consists of the compasses opened on a quadrant to an angle of 60 degrees. Within the compasses, a moon in quarter. Encircling this design, a wreath of one half wheat or corn and one half acacia. 
On the bib, a trowel embroidered in gold signifies that the district deputy grand master should spread the cement of brotherly love and affection in his district. The apron of the Committee on Work is embroidered with the 47th problem of Euclid. Within the design are the jewels of the three principal officers of the lodge, the junior warden's plum, the senior warden's level, and in between, in the triangle, is the master's square. And there you have it. The history and symbolism in the aprons worn by members of the Grand Lodge of Texas. This goes to demonstrate that you never know what you'll find in your Masonic research. So you go out and look.